Welcome to Spring Break 2019 Scratch Challenge number one. Really happy to have you here. I'm your host, Coach Newton. This is for those students on Spring Break here in the Boise School District. Those in my class that wanted to take on some extra challenges, welcome. Uh, even if you're not in those classes, welcome as well. If you want to take those on, I'll show you how to kind of start on your first scratch project. And I'll define the first challenge uh, in today's project. Before we start that, I did want to explain for those students that are in my classes as an extra kind of bonus for any work they want to do during spring break, you get a Pennication Knowledge Lanyard for the uh, Knowledge Band, as I like to call it. And if you do the complete the first challenge, you get a silver knowledge token, which then you can kind of save on the band. And if you continue with challenges two, three, four, five, and six, I'll keep adding stickers to the back of that until you get to five. And at which point, once you get to five, I will take the silver one back and you get a gold. So as far as I'm concerned, collecting knowledge as you go along is just as important as uh, any other kind of things you do. So let's see, I'm gonna put both of these on this for now. Let me go ahead and define today's challenge. Um, code on Boise, all right, so code on. Today's challenge is gonna be anything about the Boise River in your project. You could have a game, graphics, crazy funny stuff, uh, but something related to the Boise River. So if you keep that as a general topic and uh, fulfill some of the basic requirements I'll define here, um, I would consider uh, your challenge completed for challenge number one. So I'm gonna have daily challenges the rest of this week. Uh, so five challenges in total. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing is for those that don't have scratch accounts, for whatever reason and you want to kind of get started I'm gonna kind of build it from ground zero and show you how to start it so scratch.mit.edu is the website it's right up here scratch MIT edu and what I'm gonna show you in the sign-in is for these students I've pre-created some classes or I'm sorry pre-created some student accounts so they're called Scratch Day Boise, and you'll see I had some there. So if you wanted to be 01, go ahead. And if that's taken, you'll find out when the password doesn't work. So then if that doesn't work for you, try SDB 02 or 3 or 4 or 5. So I'm going to go ahead and start with 18. Actually, let me do the last one, which is 20, SDB 020. And then the password um, for 20 will be, if I could type 20, will be up right up here. I typed it in the search bar just so you could see it. It's Coach Newton, capital C, capital N, and then there's an underscore. So here I am. I'm going to type in Coach underscore N, E W T O N. All right, don't forget the capital C, and this is what you'll have happen. It'll say, hey, so hopefully you're the first couple students, you'll be SDB001 or 002, and you'll see this message and you've been invited. The very first thing it asks you is to start, do your own password. So I'm gonna not show my password to you just for giggles. I can change this later. Okay, it has to be at least six characters and I get started. It will ask you for a birth date and I'm gonna say, you know what, 10 years ago, mail and United States. There we go. And those are statistics that scratch.org collects so they can have an idea of uh, what kind of people are on here. But as you notice, there's no name or anything personally identifiable. Okay, here we go. Get started. Welcome to Scratch, Code On in Boise. Go to the class. So right away, you'll see that you're in this class and here's a studio where I'd like you to post projects. So. Just remember this page, you're gonna be coming back to it. And this is how you look. You say either my stuff or my class. If you come to my class, this is where you're at. That'll help you kind of get to the spring break challenge posting. And then the other one is my stuff. So 
So if you notice in my stuff, since you're a new student, there's nothing there. So let's start with something. Let's create. That's what Scratch is all about, is creating. So I want you to create something. Think about the focus, the Boise River. I'm going to show you a couple commands to experiment with and uh, let you play around with it. But I just at least want to get you started. So I'm going to go quickly. Don't worry, you can always pause the video and uh, pick up where you want. And then I'll send an email at the end that you can ask questions. So let's change the backdrop. Right now you'll see there's no backdrop. Here's where you add a backdrop. Right down here, choose a backdrop. Lots of options. Stick with the magnifying glass where it says choose a backdrop. That'll help us use something they already have existing. And something I'm going to search for is river because I wanted to do something related to a river. Let's pretend this is a picture of the Poise River. But uh, there it is. Okay, so in the river, I don't really want a cat. I do want to experiment with some fish. So the cat is my sprite. You can kind of drag it along in this window here, and you'll see the sprite is highlighted. So we have our backdrop. We added that. Now I'm going to click on my sprite. I want to get rid of the cat. See the little X? It's gone. All right. Let's add a sprite. Again, choose a sprite. Let's us choose from the great library that Scratch has in the community. Again, I'm going to go for fish. I want these fish. There are four fish. If you notice, as I hover, it shows me all the little sub sub images that are there. Oh, jellyfish could be kind of cool. Let's actually do jellyfish because my other project uses fish. So I want to try something new here with you. All right, there's jellyfish. So that's my sprite. And there's no code. Here's where the code will go. And then these are the commands. Lots and lots of commands. So don't worry if you're just starting out with Scratch, just like uh, the rest of you students in my classes. Uh, you start with the basics and you build from there. The fun thing is you can see how much further you have to go with learning more and more. But we're going to start with a couple of things. I want to show you how to create clones. I want to show you how they bounce off. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. And you can look into my project to see some more uh, ideas if you'd like. So the very first thing with the sprite that's kind of fun to do is to move it. But let's control when it gets moved. So there's something called events. I'll click events. You can always just scroll if you'd like. I kind of like just jumping to it. And what's nice is just when this green flag is clicked, this tells the computer to go. It's basically start my program. So that's how you control what the computer does is you tell it when to start. And if I kick, click the green flag, there goes my jellyfish. It's moving across the screen. So here's the problem. It's gone. So one of the things that you'd like to do is always have it start in the same place. So let's pick where you'd like it. I'd like my jellyfish to start down here, kind of off the bottom. And I'd like to have, I'm going to have him kind of move across to here. So that's why I have it here. Here's a hint. As you move your sprite, this location changes. So watch carefully as I move him. It tells you where that is in the screen. So it's kind of a nice way to not have to look at these numbers and always have to type it in. You can say, I want my sprite starting right here. And there it is. So that means whenever I start the flag, I want it to go there. Very first thing. The other thing is these sprites will turn and, and move. So this is the starting direction is that sprite is currently facing direction 90. So in the very beginning of my program, I wanted to continue doing that. Now moving 10 steps, just once is kind of boring. So those of you in class have learned about loops and nested loops. So I'd like, I'd love to see some programs that you write in Scratch with nested loops. So I'll do that as a little bonus. I'll look for that. So let's repeat. A loop is a repeat. So let's repeat the movement. And let's repeat it 10 times. It's just easy. So let's try our little program. The green flag says go, and it'll do all of these commands in order. There we go. That was 10 steps. All right, we're getting there. Don't worry. We could say, let's repeat that 20 times. So it goes further. And then the other little thing is let's make it, let's add a little fun. Let's make it turn a little bit each time. Let's turn 0, 05 degrees. I don't know why I do 0, 05. How about just 5 degrees? Let's see what happens. <laughs> now, he's, now he's just spinning, right? So let's, uh, I'm going to repeat that. 200 times. Let's see what happens. I love experimenting. 
you know, I can have a spinning jellyfish, okay? You could just have, this just shows you what can happen with your jellyfish. <laughs> okay, now what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's, this is, I wanted to show you how to create clones. And where is it? Da, 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 da. Even I got lost. Okay, here we go. Create a clone of myself. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to create 200 clones. So let's let's just do 20. Let's go back to 10 for now, and just turning uh, two degrees, and then moving 25 steps. And now I'm going to create a clone. So this is going to create 10 clones. Let's see how this works. Yikes! And there are the clones. They just kind of go. Now, it's not as interesting because the clones are just sitting there. Now I can say, you know what? When I start as a clone, for every clone that I start, let's switch costumes. So every time I start as a clone, switch costume to, this is where it's funny, random. That's a nice little trick. This is in operators. I'll show you that again. Because if you switch costume to, say, Jellyfish B, you may ask, what are these different costumes? Well, when you look at the sprite and go up here to costumes, you'll see there's a B, a C, a D, and an A. So in my code, I said, when I start as a clone, switch costume to Jellyfish C. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat forever. And I'm going to move three steps. And here's another little command. It's kind of nice. If you get to an edge, bounce. Now I need this repeat to make sure it keeps moving over and over and over. So that's for every clone. And it's going to switch to costume jellyfish C. So let's see. I think that was the mad one. Let's give it a try. Yikes. There are all my clones. And now they hit the edge. And they bounced. Now they're kind of all following each other because if you notice, I, I created the commands all at once. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so let me stop this. Let's do a little bit something different. So now suppose I want a couple different jellyfish. Let's go back to looks and switch costume. This is what I want to look. Let's pick a random jellyfish. So. Random one to what? So if you notice, these costumes are numbered. One, two, three, and four. So let's pick a random number between one to four, about two to four. So we won't duplicate this first jellyfish. Um, so that'll pick random. And let's uh, turn uh, random. Let's also do random. Let's pick a random turn, um, random minus 10 to plus 40. Let's see what that does. So each one will now create a, a random jellyfish. There they go. And they're kind of bouncing around. Uh, I want them to be a little bit smaller. So. Since I picked these random ones, each one turned a random amount um, and turned a number of degrees, and they're kind of bouncing around. And my first clone kind of stopped. So I'm just going to stop this for here right now so you can kind of see what's going on. The other thing is I'd like my clones to be a little smaller, so there's something called looks. Let's set the size of, of my costumes to, say, 30% the size. And I'm going to pick a wider angle of, of turning. So let's go to minus 50 to 100 degrees. So now I got these little baby ones, right? Um, and this clone, my first, my first one that moved, spawned all these little baby, baby um, <laughs> jellyfish that bounce around. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Uh, so that's how you create clones. Um, and some movement. So I'm going to let you look at my project. Let's say we want to save this. So first thing is get lost in this programming. Let's call it challenge one. So I want to share this. 
and right away it says hey thank you for sharing instructions always give some instructions press the green go flag and watch the jellyfish uh, however we do know there are none in the Boise River right uh, spring break challenge number one number one okay here we go now it may not be it and you can turn your commenting on or off if you leave the commenting on I'll, I'll add comments to your project as you post them to the studio so if I don't see them in the studio uh, it's hard for me to comment on so you'll notice there's no studio there so I found another way is you've shared it let's go back to my stuff and you'll see uh, that studio is not there yet so you say add to the studio hasn't appeared well, you have to join the studio. So see these little messages up here? I would sent you an invite. Please curate the Spring Break Challenges. So you have to go to this Curator tab and say, yes, I'd like to accept. I will love to curate it. You'll notice you've joined two other test users in there. So now that you're a cura curator, you can see, go back to my stuff, and there's my challenge. I could say, add to spring break challenges voila it is now you'll notice you have a studio and it's the spring break you can go and see coach newton's i call it spewing fish clones you can see how i did that look at the code uh, see what you can learn from it it's a good way to kind of experiment and uh, continue challenge remember something about the boise river and of course there are no jellyfish there but who knows that could be part of your program all right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, first introductory challenge to the code.org, sorry, code.org, Scratch MIT EDU. Code.org is what I'm doing during the day. I want to encourage you to uh, continue with all of the challenges. Uh, if you'd like to um, do the other challenges, I encourage you to. I'll try to post these once a day on my website and if you uh, have any emails please uh, send those through your parents uh, you can send it to code on at pancation.org and uh, on youtube go ahead and bump the like thanks so much and don't forget to code on